In this video, we're going to cover the basic publishing options in Drupal out of the box. These options dictate how and where your content displays, and all of these options are completely customizable with configuration. For example, complex publication workflows are possible in which you might require content to go through some kind of an approval process before it is visible to the public. So here we're going to add a new piece of content. It's going to be an article, and this time we're not going to follow the default settings all the way through. So I'm creating an article that talks about using peanut butter as a substitute for eggs. I'm going to grab my dummy text, pop it in, and just like last time we created an article, I'm going to add tags and an image. I'm going to add my alt text here. And now, rather than choosing Save and Publish, I'm going to use the little drop down arrow on this button, and I'm going to choose the second option, which is Save as Unpublished. So now I'm on this article, and I'm going to scroll down and show you that beneath the article is this pale shade of pink. That pink is a visual indicator that this piece of content is unpublished. And what that means is that it will not show up in any of the displays where it might normally display. For example, this is a piece of article content, and article content is meant to display on the front page. At this time, however, because it's unpublished, it will not show up on the front page of the site. Additionally, if I try to go to the site in a browser where I'm not authenticated, then I won't be able to get to the content at all. And I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL and head over to Safari, another browser where I'm not logged in, and paste this URL. Notice that I get access denied. This is because this particular piece of content is not published. Let's head back to Chrome where I am logged in, and we're gonna go to the home page and see that this content does not display. So now we'll go back to this piece of content and change some of our settings. I'm gonna use the back arrow, and then I'm going to look at this content. I'm going to find the Edit tab right here on the content, which I only see because I'm logged in as a user that has permission to edit content. So now I have the same form that I had when I created this piece of content. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the publication options on the right-hand side. The first thing that you'll see is that it says that this is not published, and it'll give me a timestamp of the last time that this piece of content was saved. What I'm interested in right now, however, are the comment settings, so I'm going to go ahead and expand those. The options I have here are comments open, so users can post comments, and closed, where users cannot post comments. Since this piece of content is about using peanut butter as a substitute for eggs, and I don't want this blog post to be derailed into a huge discussion about peanut allergies, I'm going to go ahead and close the comments on this particular piece of content. The next thing that I'm going to look at in the publication settings on the right hand side here is authoring information. We'll go ahead and expand that. You'll see that I have options to actually change the username of the author of this particular piece of content and to change when this particular piece of content was created. This can be really useful if you are putting in a piece of content for someone else or if a piece of content probably should have been published earlier than you're actually putting it on the site. At this time, however, TC4A is the only user on the site, and the date and timestamp don't matter, so I'm going to leave those be. Now, if I look at the bottom of the page, I have this big blue button here, which I can click on, and my options are Save and Keep Unpublished, or Save and Publish. And I'm going to go ahead and publish this piece of content. If I scroll down here, the comment box is now disabled, and the pink is no longer in the background of this particular piece of content. If I go back to Safari where I'm not authenticated and reload the page, now I'm able to read this particular article. We can also take a look at the home page on both of our browsers and see that this article has now been added to the River of News on the home page. Now, what if I want the gluten sensitivity article to be at the top? Right now it's hidden because it's after the peanut substitute article. So I'm going to scroll down and show you that the gluten sensitivity article is still here, but it's down lower. And really, even though it was published first, I want this article at the top because gluten sensitivity is a very key part of thinking about food sensitivities. 
So what we can do is go to this particular article by clicking on it, click Edit, and look at our publishing options on the right-hand side, again, where we were before when we looked at comments and authoring information. The final item here is Promotion Options, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that to expand it. One of the options here, in addition to Promoted to the Front Page, which determines whether or not this article shows up on the front page at all, is Sticky at Top of Lists. If I click Sticky at Top of Lists and save this particular article, I'm going to save and keep published, and then go back to the home page. So gluten sensitivity has now moved to the top, and it looks a little bit different because this particular article has been deemed special. There's one more thing that I want to show you in the publishing options, which is the URL of a particular piece of content. So we're going to go actually to the About page here, and I want to show you the URL in the browser for this About page. If you notice at the top here, it says localhost, a port. This is the domain to access the site. And then it says node 4. By default, all content in Drupal has what's called a node ID. This is a unique number assigned to each piece of content in your site so that it can be referenced by the machine and always have a consistent identifier. This really doesn't make for a very good URL. For your about page, for example, the path should probably be domain name slash about. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this particular piece of content and go back to the publishing options on the right hand side. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and expand URL path settings. I have an option here to add a URL alias. In this case, I'm going to add about. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this piece of content and keep it published. If we go back up to the URL bar now, you'll see that the URL makes a lot more sense. It's a helpful URL for this particular piece of content. In this video, we covered the default publishing settings for an out-of-the-box Drupal content type. These options included published versus unpublished, promotion status, so making something sticky so that it displays above everything else regardless of the other sort settings on the content, the URL path settings for a particular piece of content, and authoring information. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.